former Fed economist with us now, Phil Swagel. He says the economy's problems cannot be fixed by the central bank. Sarah Eisen just went through some of the reasons why. Phil, you're not alone. You have worked in the White House. You're not alone in that view, I should say. You're also Assistant Treasury Secretary. You're now at the University of Maryland and the American Enterprise Institute. We know you are joining us from Washington this morning. Thanks for being with us. Michael McKee went through some of the insider's guide to Ben Bernanke's speech today. And we know one big difference between this year and last year is that last year there was this overhang of deflation. This year we are seeing some inflation, right, this rough rise of about 2 percent. So does that confirm even more in your mind we're really not going to get any news, any headlines from Ben Bernanke today? Yeah, I mean, I, I expect the chairman to go through the, the options and to give his outlook on, on the economy, but he's in a tough spot. I mean, it's, it's not clear that another round of uh, quantitative easing would have much effect, as, as you just pointed out. Interest rates are already low, and, um, you know, the economic situation is tough. It's We still have growth. We'll probably see the revision of GDP uh, today saying there's still growth. We're creating jobs slowly, but we are creating jobs. So it's, um, you know, it's a very different situation than last year when we were worried about outright deflation. But Bernanke is an activist Fed governor. And even if he doesn't hint at something today, a lot of folks we talk to say that it could come later on in the fall. Is that dangerous? No, you know, he, he is activist in the sense that he likes to provide information. He really believes in the value of clarity. Uh, that markets should understand what the Fed is thinking and where the Fed is going. So that's activist in a traditional sense, but I, I don't expect that to result in an announcement uh, today. You know, uh, Paul Krugman writes in the New York Times today that uh, he should be doing much more, saying that he should, you know, work harder to debase the currency, punish savers uh, for, for holding cash. Do you think that that would work if he went further into that direction? Yeah, it's a really tough call, and there's a, there's a real divide in the economics profession between that, between basically, as uh, Professor Krugman said, forcing savers off of the sidelines. Uh, you know, inflation has negative effects. It has very negative effects on consumer confidence and business confidence, and intentionally engineering inflation is really tough to say that's obviously a good idea. Phil, I heard you say you don't think we're going to get a hint from Ben Bernanke today, even if he does have plans further down the line. What do you think of something more subtle, like this idea of perhaps purchasing more treasuries on the long end? Yeah, I mean, something like that changing either the size of the Fed balance sheet or the composition and, you know, the so-called operation twist. You know, if he goes into more detail about one of the options, as, as you said before, that could hint at what his preferred uh, next step is. But again, it's really going to depend on the, the data going forward because we're really at a, a turning point where sentiment is very negative, but the underlying data is just not quite as bad. It's it's. Not, it's not great, but it's just not bad. And I think we really need to see the data. Phil, some people might disagree uh, with you, though, at least as far as mm -hmm. the unemployment rate at 9% and the manufacturing weakness that we've seen in almost every indicator in the past two weeks. Oh, yeah. No, it's a, it's a terrible labor market, and, and many, millions of people are hurting, but we're still growing. We don't see the kind of de either deflation or negative growth, the recession, double dip. It, it's just not there yet in the, uh, the data. It, it could be. It could be forming, um, like the hurricane, but we don't see it quite yet. Do you think uh, the Fed chairman pays too close attention to what the stock market's doing? Uh, you know, it's hard not to. It's like the price of gasoline that consumers see every day. That's the stock market tick by tick we see. Um, on the other hand, that affects the economy indirectly through consumption, wealth to consumption. And ultimately, that's what matters, business decisions and consumer decisions. Hey, Phil, uh, David Malpass has suggested that the Fed and other people as well have suggested that the Fed uh, lower the amount of interest they pay on excess reserves for banks. Right now, 25 basis points already fairly low, but why even bother? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it kind of goes back to what Krugman was saying. Let's try to force people to deploy their, their cash. You know, that might have a modest effect. On the other hand, it could have negative effects as well. You know, most of us are already getting just one basis point on uh, bank deposits, and that could go negative, right? We saw that already, that uh, you have to pay your bank to hold your money. So it, it's not clear that that will have a big impact. Phil, you obviously have experience with the Fed. You have experience in the White House. You seem to be saying that it's not really the Fed's job at this point to help the U.S. economy. It's Congress's job. Knowing Washington as you do, is that likely to happen? Yeah, uh, it's, it's tough to see agreement going forward, but, you know, we can always be hopeful. 
um, you know, the Fed has done a lot to support the economy. So it's not that it's not the Fed's job. The Fed is doing its job. I think people are looking to the political system to come up with an agreement on the fiscal side, and that's really the next step. What do you think about? It? I mean, speaking of Washington, uh, Paul Krugman again arguing that. Politics is one of the reasons that the Fed isn't doing what it should. He says politics is keeping Ben Bernanke from following his own prescription for uh, Japan's problem in 2000. Do you think the Fed is really swayed uh, by current politics? I mean, sure, it has an impact. It's hard, it's hard not to pay attention to what's going on in, in the rest of Washington. On the other hand, Ch Chairman Bernanke has shown that he will do what he thinks is needed. And then first QE1 and QE2, uh, you know, I have no doubt if he thought we were in danger of deflation, he would do it again. If he thought we were in danger of a double dip, he would act. And, and I think it's, the situation is just m much more nuanced than what uh, a New York Times columnist might, uh, might say. Phil, if Bernanke doesn't drop any hints today, as you suggest, what gets us out of this slump looking forward in the financial markets and in the economy? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, the U.S. economy still is, is fundamentally, um, uh, you know, has, has great drivers of innovation and, and growth. We've got long-term challenges that are really hitting us now. We, we've got to figure out a way to address that. And that's where I do go back to the political situation. How do we address the fiscal challenge? Phil, we thank you so much for your insight. Phil Swagel with the University of Maryland and the American Enterpri Enterprise Institute.